One thing on the mind of the market and the president. China. China. A place called China. 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 The story is mainly about China. Well, the whole China story. The China story. The trade story. The U.S.-China trade. The biggest chunk of the uncertainty in the market that we see today is due to the U.S.-China tensions. The trade tensions are easing. That will allow companies to go back into spending. With the trade tensions that we're well aware of in the background, some people just deciding to hold off a little bit. President Trump has shown to be unpredictable. So much unpredictable behavior from this president. The threat of an all-out trade war, while it appears less likely, is still there. So anything that minimizes that is going to be good for markets in the short term. Joining me around the table to start the conversation, Michael Purvis, Whedon Chief Global Strategist, Peter Chira, Academy Securities Macro Strategy Head, and Sean Matthews, Hondius Capital CEO and CEO. IO as well. Guys, great to have you with me around the table. Michael, let's begin with you. The mood music is better around the trade story. Is there some substance to this? Well, sure. You saw the, you know, the better economic data we got last night and the night before um, there. And, and look, there's, it's no secret that there's a lot of connectivity between the bad Eurozone data and the, uh, you know, and, the, and, the, and the China issues. So if the stimulus is starting to show some green shoots, that's going to be really key, right? It's, I mean, the bond market here in the U.S., and for that matter, Germany, has, has moved right in tandem with this data. So the, it's a huge variable. And, and candidly, I think, you know, in the last FOMC, I really wish Powell had at least addressed the concept that there is a, there's some uh, inherent volatility in this view because we just don't know where the, when and where the stimulus is going to kick in and to what extent. So let's explore this morning. So we have better data around Europe. We had better data around China earlier in the week. Does the services data around Europe offset the doom and gloom in manufacturing, Peter? I think it starts to, again, I think we had a string of bad data. Everyone's extrapolating more and more bad data. I think we hit a soft spot. The big question to me is, do we get a trade deal or not? A trade deal puts a lot of this bad data behind us and we can go forward looking. What's the good impact of the trade deal? If we don't get a trade deal or we turn around and pick fights with you know, Europe or Asia x China after that deal, all bets are off again. Let's talk about the prospect of that trade deal from the White House. Kevin Cerilli joining us, Bloomberg Chief, Washington correspondent. Anything more than just better mood music, Kevin? No. Uh, and in fact, uh, there's a lot of pressure now that in terms of the ongoing U.S.-China trade talks, that there might be some crucial development, particularly on enforcement mechanisms, Jonathan, especially as these trade talks intensify today. According to the Financial Times, uh, the U.S. and China drawing closer to a final trade agreement. The, the FT is reporting that while they're still haggling over how to implement and enforce the agreement, uh, they are getting a bit closer. That's good news, especially if you're uh, Chinese Vice Premier Liu Hua, who was in town in Washington meeting with Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, as well as 